So you want to know about web components, eh? Well, let's uh, fire up CodePen and get started. All right, I got a new project here, and I'm going to create a tag called My Product in the page. Now the browser has no idea what that is, so the screen is just going to be blank. So we need to define that tag or that element for the browser. All right, so I'm going to head off into JavaScript land, and I'm going to create a class to define that element, that custom element that's going to be connected to that tag. So custom elements can be defined from any element type, uh, or I'm going to define it from the base element here. Okay, from there, I got to create a constructor and then call the super as to make sure that my HTML element gets configured properly. All right, now I got the basis going on there. Next, I'm going to set the inner HTML of that to something like hello. Cool, well, I've done that, but now I need to connect it to the my product tag. So let's do that. All right, and you can see hello over in the corner here. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So this is telling the browser that I have an implementation for this my product element, and that's the my product class. It's this window custom elements define, and you give it the, the tag name. It has to have a dash in it. That's a critical element. And then you just give it the class that you want to connect it to. There's actually a couple of different ways to define that, but I'm going to use a class here. I'm also going to shrink that down so that, you know, we don't need it for the moment. All right, so as you can see, I've got this product element, and I want it to show a product. So I need to have it have the name for a product. So I'm going to go and add that over my tag. And then I'm going to use it in the element. All right, this works because I'm creating a new element, a tag element type. Uh, definition for the browser so the this in this case actually refers to the element itself I'm actually in the context of the tag itself so that's why I can call get attribute there which is wicked cool when you think about it I'm actually extending the tag vocabulary of the browser if you wanted to do that before you'd have to like write C++ or something like that or an RFC and blah 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 and now you can just write some JS and it's up there with the big boy C++ tags like image div video or whatever super freaking cool all right so back at it uh, now before I go on and leave here I will say that it isn't the right way to do attributes uh, I'll get there eventually but I want to get on to more related things before I start drill down, drilling down on best practices uh, the first thing I want to get into is what's called the Shadow DOM. So let's go over to the CSS and define H2 and make it blue or something. And then I'm going to add an H2 to the page itself. And now both of these are in blue and right, you know, that makes sense, right? I've gone and created an H2 in my, my product class and I've gone and cut an H2 in the actual page itself. But let's say that I want the product name to be in red. So let's go and add that. Okie dokie. So now because I define that style after the page styles are defined, now all the H2s are red and, and that's bad. Uh, if you want to make a design system language, which is probably what you're doing if you're watching this video, you want one, those design elements to look the same everywhere, and you don't want their styles polluting everything else. It's a whole sort of peanut butter my chocolate type situation. So let's fix that using something called the Shadow DOM. And the first thing I'm going to do is create it. And so immediately our tag disappears, but now we can go and connect to the HTML and Shadow Root. Okay, sweet, right? So now those two H2 definitions don't conflict. And I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but just conceptually think of how the Shadow DOM works as kind of like a lightweight iframe boundary. It means that your element kind of controls everything in that part of the DOM tree. In fact, you can even see it when I open up the inspector. Hold on, let's go check that out. So you can see that shadow root thing right here, just below the my product definition and into the actual tags that are defined by that component. So let me put that away and introduce you to the third thing I want to cover, which is templates. So there's been this type of element out there for a while called template that you probably haven't used before since I can't imagine you needing to use it. And I'm going to go create one of those. 
and then I'm going to set its inner HTML to what we had in this constructor. Now that's not going to work because we have a get attribute in there and it doesn't make any sense in this context. There's no, no this right there, right? So we just kind of need to leave that H2 empty for the moment. All right, the page is working again. So now let's use that template in our class. But as you can see, it's gone again because we have no content. So we need to fix that by using a query selector to get the H2 and then set its contents. Cool, okay, so definitely some neat stuff here. But up front, I talked about web components, and, and where is that? Well, web components as a term refers to custom elements, templates, and the shadow DOM as a set of technologies. So without even realizing it, you've learned all the basics of web components right there. All right, so what's next? The next video is gonna dive into the right way to do attributes and properties, as well as event handling in your custom elements, or web components, or whatever you wanna call them. Uh, so keep watching, and we'll have some fun with this.